Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth and we do receive it written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We will take hold of it, be hearers and doers of it, and it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing you a series of messages. We brought three messages on the subject of the call of God upon our life. And we talked about who are the ones that are going to be chosen and will you be one who is chosen. We also talked about the fact that there's those who must prove themselves. We all must prove ourselves to be accepted by the Lord. Tonight, we're going to talk about the subject of faithfulness. God requires faithfulness in you and me. Faithfulness is extremely important. We can see this right off the bat as we look at Revelation 17, 14. This is speaking the time when Jesus comes back after the marriage supper of the Lamb here. And it says, They'll make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome him, for he's Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. We have a call of God. We answer the call, we'll be chosen. Remember, many are called, but only few are chosen. But then also it says the ones that are faithful. So it's not only a response to answering the call, but also being faithful. God expects you and me to be faithful in doing what he's called us to do, carry it out. We saw a scripture in the past, but we also need to look at this again in regards to faithfulness. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in verse 24, remember God has called you. And if God has called you, he's the one who's going to perform that through the word working in your life. Faithful, it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. God's faithful. He's called you. And he promises to do it. How's he going to do it? Through his word, working in your life as you're hearing and doing the word. Now, when we talk about faithfulness, faithfulness means one who is reliable, one who is trustworthy, one that you can count on, one that you know is going to carry out what, you're, what they've been directed to do. God wants us to be faithful. That's someone who's steadfast and doing the things of the Lord. God is expecting every one of us to be that way. At the same time, we know many are called and few are chosen, so only few are chosen. And then there's the ones that are faithful. So we know only few are faithful, or, but probably less than few from the standpoint of chosen, since not everybody chosen will necessarily be faithful. God is wanting you and I to be faithful. In fact, we see quite a scripture statement made in Proverbs in chapter 20, in verse 6, where it says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, thinking that they're good. But a faithful man, who can find? There's not very many faithful ones. You know, man thinks he's good. But in the sight of God, nobody's good. Only through Jesus Christ do we come into relationship with him and then his work to bring us to the place of being righteous and holy and walking in his ways. God and bringing the fruit of the Spirit, which includes goodness. Notice, a faithful man, who can find? I mean, it's hard to find. God's looking all over the place trying to find somebody who's faithful. You need to be one of the few that are faithful. Now, in understanding faithfulness, God would never require us to be faithful if he wasn't faithful himself. God, of course, is faithful. Now, let's look at some scriptures about this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. You can trust in him. You need to have trust and believe in his faith, in the faithfulness of God. Which keepeth covenant and mercy. He performs his covenant. He brings his mercy. Who's it with? With everybody? No. With them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That means that those who see his covenant and mercy be kept are the ones that have met his conditions. Those who truly love him, those are the ones who keep the commandments of the Lord. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 21, he it is that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. God wants us to keep the commandments of the Lord. That shows we love him. And then God has promised to keep his covenant 
and keep his mercy and manifest it forth in our life. But notice, he repayeth them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. You know, many people out there teach God such a good God, such a loving God. He says so great all the time. Sorry, that's not the truth. He's good and he's loving and he performs his promises and brings these things to those people that respond to him. But he's also a God of judgment. He is a righteous God. He is just. And he repays those that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. God is he's, he's tough. He's loving, but he is a one who is just. Everything is according to righteousness. Thou therefore, therefore, shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and judgments which I command you this day to do them. God expects you and me to do the word of God. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments, keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. Again, he's reiterating this about him as a faithful God, that he'll keep his covenant and mercy. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if you hearken to these judgments, keep and do them, the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto the fathers, he says. He'll love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He'll bless the fruit of thy womb, the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, the increase of thy kind, flocks of thy sheep, in the land which he swear unto the fathers to give thee. Otherwise, God will prosper you in everything that you do. He wants to bring forth his blessings upon us and even to multiply us. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you or among your cattle. Otherwise, it would be fruitful. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and put none of the diseases of Egypt, type of the world, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. God wants you to understand he's a faithful God, but he's also a just God. We see further about the faithfulness of the Lord in Psalms 89. Psalms 89, verse 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. God wants us to make known his faithfulness. That he is a faithful God who will perform his word and will bring the promises of God to pass in our life. He says, I was, he says in verse 2, For I have said, Mercy shall be a build up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. God is faithful in everything that he does. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. That's how he proves his faithfulness. He makes a covenant and swears by it that he is going to bring forth his word and perform the promises in our life. Verse 5, The heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. God is faithful in the congregation of the saints. That's speaking of you and me, the saints of the holy ones. And those are the ones who are following him and walking in his ways. Down in verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee. God is strong and God is faithful. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves arise thereof, thou wilt still them. He is a God who is strong, mighty, will bring forth his promises. Verse 24, he says, But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. God's faithfulness and mercy with those who walk in line with the word of God and do the things that he says. Down in verse 37, it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Everything God does, whether it's in the heavens or in the earth or in your life, it's all because of his faithfulness. He's trustworthy. You can count on him. You can know exactly what he will do. In fact, God's faithfulness and his mercies are new every morning. We see in Lamentations 3, 23, speaking of the mercies of the Lord in verse 22. It's in the mercies of the Lord that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. In the scriptures, you see mercy and faithfulness together often, just as you see grace and truth together, and you also see peace and righteousness together. Because as you receive the truth, you see God's favor, his grace come in manifestation. 
as you do the word of righteousness, you see the effects of it, which is peace that he brings forth. And as you walk in his ways, you'll see his mercy, his love of God in action towards you, and that he's faithful to perform his promises in our life. He is a faithful God, and he will bring things to pass in your life. You need to trust in the faithfulness of the Lord. If you understand he is faithful and you believe in that, you will never doubt the Lord whatsoever. In Psalms 36, verse 5, Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Again, we see mercy and faithfulness brought together in many different scriptures. Again, mercy is the love of God in action. Faithfulness is the guarantee of the performance of the word that he has given in the covenant. So God being faithful, it's really it's his guarantee that he's going to perform his word in your life. We even see, speaking about Jesus over the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 17, it says this, Wherefore in all things it behooveth him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful. There we see it again. Merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Jesus showed it forth. He went and he accomplished the things that God purposed. He showed forth the mercy of God in order to pay the price for us, to redeem us. And he was, he's the faithful high priest who carries out the ministry of the high priest today. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 2, speaking here about Jesus, when it speaks, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him. The Father appointed him to carry out the ministry that he had, and he was faithful. He was faithful to the Father to do the things that he told him to do. God wants you and I to be faithful to what he tells us to do. Moses, he says, speaks of him that he was faithful in all his house. That's what God is looking for. Verse 5 again, Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant, for a testimony of those things that were to be spoken after. He was a servant of the Lord. And the measure that you're serving the Lord shows your faithfulness to carry out the things that God has called you to do. It even speaks of Jesus in Revelation 1, verse 5. From Jesus Christ, who's the faithful witness. He's the faithful witness the first begotten or born of the dead, the prince or the ruler of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He's a faithful one. Everything about him is shown by the fact that he is a faithful God who will perform his word. In fact, we see further. Revelation 19, verse 11. Here's when Jesus comes, comes back. He's coming back on the white horse. Look what it says about him in verse 11. I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness does he judge and make war. He's faithful and he's true. He does things according to what is righteousness, remember. Because he is a righteous God, a holy God. We also see... He's referred to as being faithful in many places. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God wants you to get to know Jesus personally and develop a personal, intimate fellowship with Him. You've been called into fellowship. This is the word koinonia, fellowship, joint participation, communion with Him. He wants you to know Him and to walk in the ways of the Lord. He's not some distant God. God is faithful to call us into the fellowship with Jesus Christ. We see over in Psalms 118, 119, again, speaking about his word. Not only is his word truth, but you've got to know that his word is faithful. Psalms 119, verse 138. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. They're faithful. You can trust him. Whatever God says, you know he'll perform it if you believe it and you act upon it and you have faith and do what he says. Remember, a covenant involves you doing your part and God doing his part. He is faithful 
Don't ever question that he will perform his word. He will do it. Psalms 118, 119, verse 86. All thy commandments are faithful. All of them. It says, they persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. The commandments of the Lord are faithful. God is a faithful God. And his word is faithful. You can trust in it. Verse 990. Thy faithfulness is to all generations. That means he didn't just work for a while. It's to all generations. And you know what? That also includes during the tribulation period. All generations. So don't think that it's, uh, his, his faithfulness runs out when all the troubles happen. No. He's faithful to those who will walk in his ways. The few that are going to be the called, the chosen, and the faithful. And he will perform his promises in our life. Now, of course, what is the covenant? The covenant is shown by the word of God that he's given unto us. And will his word ever fail? You know, faithfulness shows that it will be performed. It's a guarantee of the performance, remember. 1 Kings 8, 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel. According to all that he promised there hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses' his servant. None of it failed, because he's faithful. God is faithful to perform the word. Now, if you believe it and act upon it and do what he says, you'll see all the promises come to pass. He wants every promise to come to pass for us in our life. 2 Timothy 1.13. He says here about holding fast Sound words, you've heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. And how we're to believe what his word says and trust in him and know, know that his word will absolutely come to pass in our life. It talks about, I must have wrote down the wrong scripture. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful as he cannot deny himself. I must have typed in the wrong one. That's the scripture. It's if we believe not, he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. The Lord will perform his word absolutely. And we see it over in Revelation 21, verse 5. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Again, this is so important. You know, many people doubt and question whether God will perform the word today. No. No. You need to know. If you know his faithfulness, you know that he will perform it in our life. So God has shown himself clearly that he's faithful. He's performed his word always for those who have come in faith and acted upon his word, done the things that he says. In Ephesians chapter 1, even in writing to the churches, notice what he speaks of when he writes to these churches. Paul wrote letters to the churches, and he wrote them to those that were the holy ones, the called ones but he also addresses them as the faithful ones. Look at it here in Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. So this tells you what's the real church. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints, that's the holy ones, which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. He's not just writing to anybody. He's writing to the real ones. He's writing to the ones that are the holy ones. He's writing to the ones that are the faithful ones. We see it again in the letter to the church at Colossae. Colossians 1, verse 2. To the saints, holy ones, and the faithful brethren in Christ. God wants you to be known as the holy one and a faithful brother. We see down in verse 7. He said, you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. This guy was faithful. God could count on him. He was trustworthy. He carried out the things that God wanted for him to do. And we see over in Colossians 4, <laughs> verse 7. All my state shall Ty Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant of the Lord. Look at what they're, they're referred to as a faithful minister. These are the guys that were written about. Verse 9, with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother. Remember, he wasn't profitable at one point, but he repented and became profitable because he became faithful. Who's profitable? The ones who are faithful and, as he said, the beloved brother who's carrying out the things that God has called us to do. 
God is wanting you and I to be faithful. What are the characteristics that are going to show forth that you are going to be one who is faithful? 2 Samuel chapter 2, excuse me, 1 Samuel that is, chapter 2, verse 35. Samuel called to be a prophet, and here he was the one who became the priest, remember? 1 Samuel 2.35, I will raise up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I'll build him a sure house and he'll walk before mine anointed forever. I'm really pointing towards Jesus. But who's he been talking to here? He's talking about Eli who wasn't a faithful priest. Faithful was not, Eli was not restraining his sons. And he was more interested in the money and all the things coming in instead of having his eyes on doing what the Lord told him to do and being obedient. Notice, he says, this is one who's going to be doing according to what's in my heart and what's in my mind. What's in God's heart and his mind? His word, his purposes, his desires. And he reveals them to us through his word. And what's he want? He wants that in your heart and in your mind. God's word is to be in your heart, in your mind, so that you will do the things that he wants you to do. And you will walk in the ways of the Lord. In 1 Samuel, chapter 22, over in verse 14, speaking about David here, Abimelech answered the king and said, Who is so faithful among all thy servants as David? David was known as a faithful servant, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding in his honorable in thine house. He would go with whatever he was told to do. He'd follow, he was obedient. He was honorable in his house. He carried out the things that God wanted. He was a faithful servant. That's what God's looking for. He's looking for faithfulness because you're obedient. And you do the things that God tells you to do in the Word. 2 Chronicles 34, verse 8. In the eighteenth year of his reign, when he purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaleah, and Messiah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Joahaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. He was to repair the house. That was his job given. Well, did he do it? He sure did. They said the men did the work faithfully, and the overseers of them, all these ones, they set it forward, and they carried out the work of the Lord that they were supposed to carry out. That's what God wants. He want, they did all the things they were supposed to do. This is in the building the house, repairing the house. Well, how does that apply to us? You and I are the house of God. He wants the repair to occur in our life. He wants us to be repaired, restored, healed, delivered. And he wants us to do that work faithfully as you're working out your own salvation, getting delivered, getting set free, dealing with everything that's negative that's come into your life to build the things of God and bring the rep repairing of God, the restoring of all areas. He wants to restore our soul. He wants to heal us from everything. 2 Chronicles 19, verse 8. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and the priests and the chief of the fathers of Israel for the judgment of the Lord for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall you do in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a perfect heart. Notice what was the requirement for these that were put in positions of authority to carry out the judgment of the Lord. They had to have the fear of the Lord before them. They had to have a perfect heart. And they had to do it faithfully. God expected them to carry this out. That's what God wants in your life. The fear of the Lord, perfect heart, and doing everything faithfully before Him. Over in uh, 2 Chronicles 31, verse 11. Hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them and brought in the offerings and the tithes and the dedicated things faithfully. The people were bringing in the tithes and offerings faithfully. And there was such heaps, there was such a tremendous amount because all the people were faithful. God wants you to be a tither, bring in tithes, bring in offerings faithfully. It's important to the Lord. It shows your faithfulness. Remember, the tithe is holy unto him. It belongs to him. And we, we are to pay our tithes, and then we give offerings over and above the 10%. He expects us to do these things faithfully. Faithfully. 
That means you just don't do it whenever you feel like it. God's looking for that. Remember, those who are, don't tithe have robbed God in the house of the Lord, as the Bible says. Psalms 5, verse 9. Here's another point about characteristics showing whether you're faithful or not. He says in verse 9, there's no faithfulness in their mouth. That means their mouth must be just speaking all other kind of things. Their inward parts vary weakness. Their throat's an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Their mouth's speaking all kinds of things that they shouldn't be speaking. God is looking for you to have a faithful mouth to speak right words out of a right heart. Right words. He wants you to be faithful. Your mouth is made as a releaser to release the things that God wants you to release through the Word of God as you speak things into being and speak the promises and pray and do all the things He wants. Psalms 12, verse 1. Look at this statement. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. Couldn't find any godly men. Why? For the faithful fail from among the children of men. That means faithfulness is tied into whether you're godly or not. These guys had ceased being godly. Why? Because they weren't faithful anymore. So only those who are faithful are considered godly from his standpoint. And in this case, the godly man ceaseth. What a mess. We've got to be sure that we are faithful if we're going to be considered one of the godly from God's perspective. In Psalms 40, verse 10, he said, I have not hidden thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Otherwise, God doesn't hold back revelation of his righteous ways or his truth or his loving kindness to us, the great congregation. No. He declares his faithfulness and his salvation. He reveals it to us and that he's a performer of it. Remember, Faithful one is one who guarantees that he will perform the promises and bring forth the mercy of God in our life. That's what God wants. You need a revelation of this. You get a revelation of God's faithfulness and being faithful and the faithfulness of his word, you will never doubt. You will always believe. You will never waver whatsoever. Proverbs 11, here, he talks about here, Did I write this down again? It's been a, quite a week about doing all the stuff on this new instrument. Proverbs 11, verse 3, it says, The faithful concealeth the matter. That's not the scripture. I don't know where it went to. Obviously. Hmm. Sorry. Won't be like that after today. Faithful conceal the matter. It's what the scripture says. Not a gossiper, but someone who carries things out. And he doesn't speak negative things. Proverbs 13, verse 17. A wicked messenger falls into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Faithful ambassador. That's what God wants. You and I are ambassadors for Christ. He wants to be faithful. What do we do? Preach the gospel. We're going to be releasing health and healing, wholeness to people. See people be cured. Go out, cast out the demons. Lay hands on the sick. Heal the sick and do the mighty works of the Lord. That's what he wants. In fact, you and I are called to be witnesses before the Lord. Proverbs 14, verse 5, A faithful witness will not lie. You and I are going to be faithful. We won't lie. We're going to tell the truth. We're going to tell things straight forward. But the false witness will utter lies. People that are liars are not faithful. Don't ever lie. Always tell the truth. Isaiah 1, 26, I will restore thy judges at the first and thy counselors at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. That's what we're going to become. The city of righteousness. All those that are walking in righteousness will be there. And the faithful city. Again, this again shows the godly people. It shows the people that are really following the Lord. Those who are righteous. Those who are faithful. To carry out the things that God has said in his word. You and I must be faithful. Also, his word is faithful. And what's he tell us to do? Titus 1.9, holding fast the faithful word as you've been taught. We should never let go of the word. We should never back off the word if we know it's faithful. The faithful word. 
you may be able to sound doctrine, both to exhort and convince, convince the gainsayers, the people that speak against them, because you know the word. You know the word's faithful. You know he's a performer of it. And you certainly, as you do that, you're working it out in your own life as well. Over in 2 Timothy, as the word is going forth to you, look what he says. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, he says, The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We're committing the word of God to you, considering you faithful men and women. You're going to take hold of these things, and you're going to get it in you to teach others. Remember, like Ezra was, he heard the word, and God kept the commandments and did it, and then he went and taught it to others as well. That's what God wants. God wants you to get the word in you so you can teach it to others. Also, you will never back off of holding fast to the confession of the word of God, which is speaking the promises into being as you speak the word to bring them, release them with your faith is when you know he's promised, that he is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. The word faith, by the way, is el peace. It means hope. It doesn't mean faith, just so you understand this. And we can show you this because it's the word el peace. Notice, 54 times it's been used. 53 times it's translated hope, which is correct. One time, erroneously, in the King James Version faith, it means hope. And Young's corrects the error in the King James. Let us hold fast the profession or the confession of our hope. You see, you have hope, and then the confession of it is the release of your faith, putting your faith in operation, which brings your hopes into being. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And notice, as you're speaking forth the word, the confession of your hope, your confident expectancy of what God will do, which is what hope means, you never waver. Why? For he is faithful that promised. That means you'll never back off You'll never be saying something different. You'll be always say, speaking forth what the promise is, speaking into being, knowing that he's going to bring it to pass. That's confidence. God wants you to have absolute confidence. He is faithful that promised. If God made a promise and you know he's faithful, you know he will perform it in your life. We must have that confidence in his faithfulness. Hebrews 3, or me, Titus 3, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Otherwise, he was supposed to say this continually. That they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These, good, these things are good and profitable unto men. Your works are important. He wants you to maintain good works, carrying out the works of God. He said this is to be constantly a faithful saying. If you really believe in God and you follow him, you're going to be careful to maintain good works in all the things that you do. Because remember, that's how he knows whether we're following him. That's why he says in Revelation 2 and 3, I know their works, I know their works, I know their works, I know their works. Your works show your faith. Your works show whether you've been walking in his ways and obedient, carrying out the thing. It shows what's in your heart as well. Over in 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, that's persecution, not letting the devil beat you up, it's persecution from the outside, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. God's a faithful creator. He'll keep you, he'll keep your soul, he'll protect you. He'll bring you through. You will have persecution for righteousness sake, but God will deliver you out of these things. You may go through a lot of things in life, but God is faithful to deliver you and keep your soul. We see in that third John, verse 5. Third John, over in verse 5. He says, What's beloved thou what thou doest? Faith, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. It means God wants you to do everything and be faithful. Whether you do it to brethren or you do it to strangers, those are ones outside of the covenant, foreigners. Do it faithfully. Be faithful. Because who do you do everything unto? You do it unto the Lord. You don't do it unto men. 
If you don't do it under the Lord, then you're always doing it under the Lord. You'll be faithful all the time. If you're only doing it to men and whether they love, they're going to respond back to you, then that's the wrong way to approach things. This is why you can walk, do all the Word of God in all cases when you do everything under the Lord. You live under the Lord, remember. You never respond out of self. That's always walking in the ways of sin. Another thing, requirements, if you're going to be one who's going to be shown to be faithful. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Let, so let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Notice, it's required. It is a requirement before God. You are a steward. You've been given things by God. You're stewards of the mysteries of God that he brings revelation to you. He just doesn't bring these things to you for you just to do whatever you want with them. You're to be a faithful steward of it. You're to carry it out. You're to hold fast to it. You're to walk in the light of it. You're to incorporate it into your lifestyle. Be a doer of it. Be faithful to teach other people. Go out and do the works of God. You see, you're representing the Lord. You're an ambassador for Him. You're to be a faithful ambassador. We're stewards of it. And notice again, it says it's required that a man be found faithful. It is a requirement. That's why I want the call of the chosen and the faithful are back with Jesus. The ones who are faithful aren't faithful, aren't going to be with them. Faithfulness is necessity. You know, faithfulness always precedes promotion in life. If you're not faithful, you're not going to get promoted. You're not going to be going anywhere whatsoever. He expects every one of us to be faithful. If you're faithful, you will see great rewards. God is a God who will reward us not only according to our works, the things that we do, but it's also tied in with our faithfulness, which shows a perfect heart, the fear of the Lord, and doing the things that he says. 1 Samuel 26, verse 23. The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. Otherwise, you're going to get rewarded or given according to your righteousness and according to your faithfulness. That's what he's going to looking at. He's looking at, are you faithful? And have you been righteous? He's going to give you according to that. Over in Nehemiah, chapter 7, verse 2. He said that I gave my brother Hanani, and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. Oh, they were put in a position of authority. Why? For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. What are the requirements for leadership? Faithfulness, or for those in positions of authority, and fearing God so you'll walk in the ways of the Lord. You fear God, you'll hate evil. You fear God, you won't compromise. You fear God, you'll do what the Word says. You, you won't, you'll walk in the ways of, of the knowledge of God. He was faithful man and feared God above many. That's the guy who was given command or the charge over Jerusalem. And this is so important, because you're going to see, when we get down and finish these scriptures, if you're not faithful, you're not going to see a good position in the life to come at all. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 7. Why did God choose Abram? We see back in verse 6, he said, no, verse 7, it begin. Thou art the Lord, the God, who did choose Abram and brought him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name of Abraham. Now, why did he choose him? He found his heart faithful before thee. See, God looks on the heart, doesn't he? He's looking to see whose heart is right and who's going to be faithful. Who can you count on? Who can you trust? Who's reliable? Who do you know is going to do exactly what they say or exactly what you tell them to do? God knew this guy would do it. Remember, Abraham's the one who commanded his house after him in the way of the Lord. He was obedient. He carried out what God told him to do. He found his heart faithful before him and made a covenant with him. God, you have to understand, God doesn't arbitrarily pick people out of anywhere. There was a reason why. Because what was in their heart. It's like Moses was faithful. Moses was one who would obey him. He was very meek. Abram, he was faithful. He knew he could trust in him. 
and he carry out the things that God wanted for him. Nehemiah 13, verse 13. I made treasures over the treasuries. <clears throat> these were the ones, he lists these ones. And he comes down and says what the reason was for. For they were counted faithful, and their office was distributed unto their brethren. So they had a responsible position to do things. You want to have responsible positions in the things of God and life to come? You've got to be counted faithful. You will never get anywhere if you're not faithful. Faithfulness is a prerequisite for promotion, for being put in any positions of authority or responsibility. That's why these guys were made the treasures over the treasuries. You see it time and time again. It's all tied in. Promotion is tied in with faithfulness. It's just common sense. Nobody in their right mind who's an employer is going to promote an employee and they're not faithful to do what they're told and carry out their job and do an excellent job before they're going to promote them. <coughs> Psalms 31, <coughs> excuse me, verse 23. He says, Oh, love the Lord, all you saints, all you saints. These are the ones that are the, supposed to be the faithful, godly ones, is what this word means. Love the Lord, you godly, faithful ones. For the Lord preserves the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. God will preserve and guard and watch over, protect the faithful, and he rewards those of the proud doer. So those who are the saints are the faithful ones. That's who God considers. You know, he doesn't look to see all these people born again and think that they're, they're the automatic saints and faithful ones. No. He's looking at what their heart is, what they do. He preserves the faithful because he sees what they do and rewards the proud doer. They're doers of the word. They carry it out. That's why you hear us talk about being a doer of the word all the time, and we will never stop talking about it. It is absolutely essential if you're going to ever to grow up, develop, and be shown to be faithful before God. Psalms 106, 101, verse 6. Look at this scripture. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Well, that means his eyes must not be on the ones that aren't. If anything, he's working to call them to repentance. My eyes are on the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. So who's the faithful of the land? He's walking in a perfect way. He's walking in holiness. He's walking in righteousness. He's walking uprightly. That's the one that's going to serve him. Would you have anybody serve you that's not walking right? No way. I can't count on that guy. I can't expect it. I know he's going to do something. No. My eyes are upon the faithful of the land. We need to be faithful in everything that God tells us to do in his word. Psalms 143, verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in, in thy righteousness. Notice, he has confidence in God's faithfulness to respond to his prayer. When you pray, knowing that God's a faithful God, that will enable you to have faith, to know that he is a faithful God, will respond to the things that you prayed in line with his word. And he will bring these things to pass when you look at it from a New Testament standpoint. God wants us to trust in him. Proverbs. Here's another important statement. Chapter 28, verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. That's quite a statement. That means if we're not abounding with blessings, are we faithful? God would never say a faithful man shall abound with blessings if it wasn't the truth. It means if you're not seeing blessings come upon you in your life, are you faithful in God's sight? A faithful man shall abound, he'll have great with blessings. Remember, the Bible says if we hearken diligently in the voice of the Lord our God, observe and do all the commandments that he's given us, all the blessings will overtake us and come on us and we won't even be able to get away from them. God wants to bless us. Is God holding anything back? He withholds no good thing from those that walk uprightly. It's our sins and iniquities that withholding our good things from us, the Bible says. 
A faithful man shall abound with blessings. God wants you blessed. That means faithfulness is a prerequisite to blessings. No faithfulness, no blessings. Doesn't matter whether you know you believe the word. You're gonna to have to be faithful to do it and carry it out. That's why the guy who hears the word and doesn't do it, he still gets wiped out by the, the, the tax that come against him. It's only the hearers and the doers. Those are the ones that are shown to be faithful. Faithful man shall abound with blessings. Look at the statement that was made about Daniel. Remember, Daniel, he's the one that got all this revelation, all these visions, interpretation of all these things, and these different kings, you know, he was under. He just wasn't arbitrarily picking him out. Look what it says in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4, the testimony about him. These are the guys, the presidents and the princes that were trying to trap him he was the head over them all, and they'd set this thing up where you couldn't pray to a god for 30 days and got the king to sign this order from a law, yeah, from which in the law and the, and the Medes and the Persians, they couldn't change it whatsoever. And in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4, this is why they had to come up with some deceitful way. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, because he was over it. But they could not find, could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. This also defines faithfulness from God's standpoint. There isn't any occasion for fault. There isn't any error. There, we're not making mistakes. We're walking the walk. We are, we, if we do, we correct our mistakes right away and get on the right path, otherwise we don't continue. In his case, they couldn't find any occasion or fault. He was faithful. Nothing, he, there was nothing wrong with him. That's what God's looking for. He wants you to be faithful. And the measure that you're faithful is measure that you have come out of error and overcome sin and bondages in your life, and you have overcome all faults. You are able to overcome everything in your life. Sin has no dominion over you. You can overcome every situation. You can be healed, restored, delivered from everything that comes against you. Here's another thing about what faithfulness will produce. Hosea chapter 2, verse 20. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Betroth or engage you, you know, and what's, what's this all point towards? The body of Christ is the bride. Jesus is the bridegroom. Who's he going to marry? The ones who are faithful. Not just anybody out there. Are you going to marry anybody out there that comes along? No. Only somebody is faithful, right? And proves himself. I'll betroth thee into me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. When you are faithful in walking in the ways of the Lord, what's going to happen? The, one of the things is you're going to know him. He's going to reveal himself to you. Just like in this case, you're only going to marry someone you know real well, right? <laughs> you're going to know the Lord. You're going to develop a personal, intimate fellowship with him. See, God's going to reveal himself unto you. It's not just, you know, trying to follow some principles. It's knowing him. You're going to become like him. You're going to have his mind, his heart, his desires, his will, his, his, you make his choices. You'll be thinking like he wants. God wants us to think like he wants and have the mind of Christ. So we choose the ways of the Lord as well. Tremendous promises that God has for us. Hosea chapter 11, over in verse 12. Here he says, Ephraim compassed me about with lies and the house of Israel with deceit, but Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the saints. These other guys were going the wrong direction. But this one, Judah was ruling because he was faithful with God, with the saints. God wants you to be faithful. You want to rule and reign in the life to come or even in this life, you got to be faithful. All these things are so important. Now when you sin, what do you do? You go to the Lord and you confess your sins. And do you know what God's going to do? Look what it says, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just or righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a tremendous promise. Instead of dying in our sins and being under you know, dominion of sin and letting the enemy work against us, we can confess our sin. God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. The reward of his faithfulness is he will forgive your sins and cleanse them as if they never were. Remember, he remembers your sins and iniquities no more when you've confessed them and turned from them. Also, the faithfulness of God will deliver you out of temptation. Look what he says. If you look to him, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there's no temptation taken you or overtaken you, taken hold of you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful, who will not suffer you or leave you to be tempted above your able, but will with the temptation that comes at you, he'll make a way of escape, which is his word of what to do that you may be able to bear or to stand under this, bear up, to be able to stand in the midst of this a thing coming against you instead of letting it just crush you. No, God will make a way of escape. Why? Because God's faithful. He'll show you what to do. If you do fall for temptation, get in immediately to look to the Lord. What's the way out of this? What do I do? He will show you what to do so you do the right thing, so you come out from under this and you will escape the negative thing that the enemy is trying to bring against you. We see another thing over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 3. The Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So there's another thing. Promise of what God will do is a faithful God. The word establish means to make you stable, firm, and set fast. It's the word sterizo. He's going to make you so firm and set fast. You're not going to waver. You're going to be set, strong, firm, constant. Isn't that the mark of a faithful one? Someone who's constant, consistent. You can rely on him. You, can, you know he's going to do it. And he's going to keep, which means to guard. It's the word philoso, which means to guard you from evil. God will guard us from evil. And why, of course, is this? Because you put the word of God first place in your life. You've been a deliverer, of the, you've been a doer of the Word of God. God will accomplish all these things. Another thing we see over in 1 Timothy, verse 12. Why did Paul get put into the ministry? Here's the answer. Verse 12, I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He saw that this guy was a faithful guy in what he was doing. He was faithful. Remember, he was faithful in persecuting the Christians. He was faithful. He was a Pharisee of all Pharisees, excelling, you know, in the, the law of the Old Testament. God got a hold of him, turned him whole thing around, gave him revelation of the ways of the New Testament, the way of the Lord, the way of the true way of righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. And he saw him faithful and he put him in the ministry. That means faithfulness precedes promotion in any aspect in life. See, God's looking for those that are faithful. Hebrews chapter 11, quite an interesting verse. Remember Abraham and Sarah finally had the child. Abraham had to get in faith, but also Sarah. Look what it says in Hebrews 11, 11. Through faith, also, Sarah herself received, as the Greek word lambano, which means to take, or to take hold of. She received strength, which is the word dunamis, which really means power. She took hold of power, as Young brings out, to conceive seed with her faith. You can take hold of power to bring into conception and the things that God has for you. And she was delivered of a child when she was past age. Now why? Because she judged him faithful who had promised. The promise was there, but how do we know he's going to perform it? She judged him faithful. And because she judged him faithful, she operated her faith to take hold of power to conceive seed. That tells you something. If you don't have, know God's faithfulness, will you be able to operate your faith to take hold of promises? No. 
Many people teach just act on these principles of faith to take hold of things, but they've never been taught and established really in getting the faithful, established in the fact that God is faithful according to the promises. You need to have trust, absolute confidence in the Lord and knowing that he's faithful. Notice, what's the key? She judged him faithful who'd promised. Because you judge him faithful, you'll be able to take hold of every promise with your faith. You can't take hold of it without knowing God's faithful and he's going to perform it. You can go through the motions and do what everybody says, A, B, C, D, do these things and all these great things will happen and nothing happens for these people because they don't trust God's faithfulness. They haven't known his character and known him. She judged him faithful that promised and therefore she took hold of the power of God to conceive seed and saw it come to pass. Faithfulness is essential if you're going to put your faith in operation. Your faith will go nowhere if you don't know that God is faithful. Matthew 24, down in verse 45. Look what he says. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give meat in due season? So now we see who's going to get promoted, the guy who's going to make made ruler. The guy who's going to made ruler, be made ruler is the faithful and wise servant. Wisdom, and he was faithful. Wisdom comes from walking in line with the word, doing what he says, going to be imparted to you by the Lord. But he's a faithful servant. God wants you to be faithful in everything you do. Can God count on you? Can he count on you to pray? Can he count on you to get in the word? Can he count on you to walk, work out your salvation? Can he count on you to be an ambassador for the Lord, carry out the ministry of the Lord? Can he count on you when something comes up and he needs you to do something? That's what God wants. Every one of us must become faithful. Look what he says in Luke chapter 16. It's absolutely essential. Verse 10. Luke 16, 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Otherwise, if you get established in being faithful in just any little thing, that quality established in you will carry over into all the things you do. If you think you're going to suddenly get faithful in much and you haven't developed faithfulness before, it'll never happen. The guy that's faithful in least is faithful in much, but the guy is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. What's that show you? Faithfulness and being unjust are opposites. The faithful guy, remember, he's the guy that's righteous as well. He does what's right. He's a doer of the word of righteousness. The unjust, he's a guy who doesn't. He's unjust. He doesn't do things right. He doesn't carry out the things God wants. And if you are unjust in just some of the little things, you'll be unjust in much. It'll carry over in all aspects of your life. That's why you know people buy their fruit. And he goes on and he says in verse 11, If therefore you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, all the riches, money, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Nobody in their right mind. If you aren't faithful in a little thing, you aren't faithful in the unrighteous mammon or riches or things of this earth, nobody's going to commit the true riches to you. And notice he says, if you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If you borrow something from someone, did you treat it just like your own and make sure that you cared for it just like it was your own? Or did you think, it's someone else's, doesn't matter. <laughs> when you get a rental car, treat it like your own. Well, it doesn't matter, a big deal. Oh yeah, it matters. You go to a motel, well, just rent it for a night, not a big deal. Well, you, you don't trash it, don't mess it up, make sure you clean up, you do what's right. Anything that you, that you if you're faithful in something that's another man's, then someone will give something which is your own. God wants you faithful in everything you do. Everything. Including dealing with other people's things. He expects you to be faithful. Look what it says in Luke 19, verse 17. 
He said unto them, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Wow. That's in the life to come, isn't it? If you've been faithful in a little, very little, means God can count on you and you always will do it. You're always trustworthy. You're always reliable. You could get authority over ten cities. That's tremendous. Matthew 25. Verse 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. See, you're going to enter in the joy of the Lord because you're going to be promoted. If you're not promoted, will you be entering into the joy of the Lord? <laughs> you won't be too happy. In fact, if you don't do things right, remember the guy gets beat with stripes. <laughs> not many stripes because he wasn't right before the Lord. Uh, we want to be faithful before the, what the Lord expects. Verse 23 again. This Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make the ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We want, and how are you going to be a ruler, though? Why would you be a ruler? Because you have already trained to be a ruler. Because you have developed in the things of God. If you can't rule over your, the Bible even says you can't rule over your own house, who's going to put you a ruler over the church of God? <laughs> Nobody. If you can't rule over your body, how are you going to rule over anything else? If you can't rule over this flesh and keep it under, are you going to be able to rule over anything in the future? No. God wants you just to rule over the things He's given you now. Be faithful for a few things. And God will make you ruler over many things. Really a powerful message, really important message. All of these messages on called, chosen, proving yourself so you're accepted, they are absolutely essential for every Christian. Now go back to Proverbs 20, verse 6. Look at this statement again. Most men proclaim his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. That's a prideful devil that says I'm good and all these things. You don't talk about yourself anyway. You let somebody else talk about you, but not you about you. A faithful man who can find God is looking for faithful ones. And again, two other scriptures that we already looked at that we need to look at again before we close. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 24. In fact, if we go back to verse 3, it says, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That's the whole person, W-H-O-L-L-Y. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. He wants you to be blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blameless. No cause for censure. Sounds like Daniel. No fault. Couldn't find anything fault or occasion against him. No reason to say anything negative about you. That's why, hey, if you got... Confess your sins, turn away from them, get on the right road, follow the Lord. Don't give place to anything again that's not right. Make sure in all relationships you do things according to the Word of God what's right. Be sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. This gives you the confidence. God called you. He's faithful. He will do it. Well, how does God do it? He doesn't do it without your participation. You have to do what he says. That's why it's a covenant relationship. You have your part to play and your responsible part. God's got his responsible part. He absolutely will perform his word in everything that he says. Your job is to do everything that he tells you to do. If you will do everything he says and be obedient in all things, God is faithful to call you, who will do everything. And what will he do? He will bring you to the place of being sanctified, spirit, soul, and body, preserved, preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord. Huh, that's great. That's what we want. 
And again, we go back to the first scripture that we looked at. Revelation, chapter 17, verse 14. Again, these are the ones that are with Jesus when he comes back. They make war with the Lamb. The Lamb will overcome them. He's the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. <clears throat> they that are with them are called, chosen, and faithful. This is such an important message because obviously this implies if you're not called, chosen, and faithful, you won't be with them. That's why many are called, but few are chosen. Many are going the wrong way that leads to destruction. Few are going the right way. Many will say, Lord, Lord. And they aren't going to get any good response. Many will say, I did all these things. I prophesied. I cast out demons. I did all these many wonderful works. But only those that do continually the will of the Father are going to enter into the kingdom. Remember what it says in Matthew 7, verse 21. The called, the chosen, and the faithful. It's a very important message for every one of us. God is faithful. Jesus was faithful. His word is faithful. The church is to be faithful. He addressed the faithful holy ones. That's who he can talk to. Not just this one who got born again, got his ticket to heaven supposedly, and then walks and does whatever he wants to do. <laughs> that's a joke. That teaching is such an abominable lie that's gone forth in the body of Christ. No responsibility, you know. The grace, automatic, whatever God wants, or whatever God wants to do, all the responsibility is always on him. And he always gets the blame for everything, doesn't he? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Nobody wants to take any responsibility. They are deceived. You've got to get the word in your heart, mind, do it, obey God. Let's get the repair and restoration work done in our lives. God wants you to be, have the fear of the Lord, be faithful and with a perfect heart. Be a tither. Don't ever rob God. Make sure your mouth is speaking right words. Remember, if you're not faithful, God does not consider you godly. Only the godly, only the faithful are considered godly in His sight. Declare His faithfulness to others, that He will perform His word. Don't ever say, well, I don't know, I, God probably won't do it for you. Uh, don't ever say that to someone. God will perform His word. All things are possible to him that believeth. According to your faith, be it unto him. Someone says, well, you, you won't be healed or something. <laughs> Don't listen to that person ever again. Don't be a gossiper. Be a faithful ambassador. Don't lie. Do righteousness. Hold fast the faithful word. Get it in you and teach others. Hold fast your confession without wavering. And you know it's going to come to pass because you've got this high priest up there. That's why you hold fast your confession. He's taken it and confessed it before the Father and confessed it before the angels. And that it's going to come to pass in your life. Maintain good works. Commit your soul to him in good doing well. Whatever you do to the brethren or strangers, always do it faithfully. Be a faithful steward over whatever God has given you. Be faithful. The rewards. God will give you according to your righteousness and faithfulness. You'll be promoted because of faithfulness. He'll perform His word because of faithfulness and your faithfulness to do His word. You'll be preserved and rewarded. His eyes will be upon you and you'll dwell with Him, walk in a perfect way and serve God. He'll answer prayer. You'll abound with blessings. There won't be any error or fault in you as you come to the place of being faithful in everything. You'll know Him. You'll rule with Him. He'll forgive your sins. He'll deliver you out of temptations. He'll establish you and keep you from evil, guard you. He'll promote you and put, in, put you into the ministry of whatever He's called you to. He'll see the promises come to pass. If you're faithful in least, you'll be faithful in much. You'll be made a ruler over much, even maybe given authority over ten cities and enter into the joy of the Lord. If you're faithful over little, and you've got to be faithful over another man's, you can't just be faithful over what's yours. You've got to be faithful over everything. God's faithful. He called you. And he said he would do it and perform his word. We see the bottom line. Those that are with him are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. If you're not chosen, you won't be with him. If you're not faithful, we won't, you won't be with him. We determine. We are the called. We respond to the call of God. We will be chosen.
And we will choose the things that God wants. But not just choose them, we will be faithful to carry out everything that he says. Therefore, we'll be the called, the chosen, the faithful, and praise God of what, what's going to happen. You're going to be entering the joy of the Lord and be given ruler over something or authority over something, or you're going to come into something good in the life to come. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God about faithfulness. I understand this is critically important in my life. I see from the Word that you have shown that you are faithful. And Jesus was faithful. Your Word is faithful. You perform your Word. Your mercies are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness. I thank you. I will do what your word says. Carrying out the responsibilities. Doing what the word says. So that I am found faithful. My mouth shall speak right words. I will tithe faithfully. I will restore my life doing this restoration work through the word of God and casting out the demons and driving out all the enemies and walking in the ways of the Lord. I will obey the word. I will be holy. I will walk in righteousness. I will hold fast the faithful word. I will maintain good works. I am a faithful steward over what God has given to me. And I'll be faithful to not only the brethren, but also strangers. I thank you, Lord, that you will bring your blessings. I will abound in blessings. And I will come to the place. Because if I'm faithful in just a little bit, or in a few things, you'll make me ruler over many. I thank you. I understand. Promotion comes after being shown faithful. I cannot expect God to promote me in anything if I am not faithful. I will be faithful in doing what the Word says, carrying out the Word of the Covenant, doing what all you tell me to do in the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, that I also have confidence. Faithful are you who called me who also will do it. Thank you, Lord. I will be one of the called, chosen, and faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. These last few minutes are extremely important, but extremely important for, last messages are extremely important for every Christian. Those three on the call of God, the one about chosen, proving yourself to be accepted, and this one on being found faithful. Praise God. Take hold of them. Be a doer of the word. Carry out what God says. Priorities in order. Remember, there's no excuses. <laughs> you know, if we don't have our priorities in order, we got a problem. We can't put God first place and do things. God wants you to be faithful. Just be faithful in the little things. And I see, see you who are faithful to come to church all the time, to praise and worship God, to hear the word whenever you can, you know, what it works with your situation, your scheduling and so forth. That's great. If we can't even be faithful in those little type things, faithful in tithing, faithful in, in doing the in things that he tells us to do, praising, worshiping him, all these things. They're such small little things compared to ruling over cities. You're going to try, you want to get the word in you such that you know the ways of the Lord. And that's the way you think, that's the way you speak, that's the way you walk. And that's the way you're, you're found faithful in everything you do. Make sure that you are obeying the call, you're being chosen, choosing the right things, and being found faithful. Father, I thank you for all that you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of this word. And I thank you that each one of us will be found faithful. And you said, faithful man, who can find? That means there's not very many of them out there. Father, I thank you that we determine that we're going to be 
of the few that are found faithful. Thank you, Father. Each one of us will be hearers and doers of this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.